So today I'm going to talk about asymptotic theory of quantum channel estimation. It is joint work with Liang Xiang, and this is the archive number of our work. So the outline of my talk, uh, I'm first, first going to introduce, uh, give, give you a basic review of quantum metrology, and then I'm going to talk about our results and finally some examples. So if, before we talk about um, uh, quantum metrology, I'm first going to uh, talk about what is classical estimation theory. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on only one parameter estimation. So suppose we have some parameter omega we want to sense. And um, what really happens uh, is it is encoded in some probability distribution, px omega, where x is a measurement result and omega is just a parameter you want to estimate from x. And then you use some estimator omega hat, which is a function from x to omega. And then uh, we care about the estimation precision in, in this procedure. So uh, the estimation precision is defined by this uh, variance of omega hat, uh, and then taking the square root. And for unbiased estimators, which uh, we only consider unbiased estimator, which is defined by this uh, formula. Basically, the expectation value of omega hat has to be the true value of omega. And for this type of estimators, we have a lower bound called the Kramer bound, uh, which is one over the square root of n times f, where x, uh, where um, n is the number of experiments and f is the so-called classical Fisher information. And it is a function of this probability distribution of X. And you can sort of view this uh, Fisher information as a, a distance between the probability at omega and the probability at omega plus omega, uh, plus the omega. And another important thing is that this Kramer bound is separable asymptotically when this number of experiments is large. So basically, um, this that's why this Kramer bound is the fundamental bounds, uh, fundamental limit for this uh, classical estimation precision. And in the quantum case, uh, instead of considering a probability distribution, <clears throat> we should consider a density matrix, which is rho omega, uh, a density matrix, which is a function of omega. And what we do is uh, we, we do any POVM on, on this row omega, and then we get some probability distribution, and then we infer the value of omega using the classical estimation theory. And again, we would have a quantum version of the Kramer bound, which is uh, this uh, replace the previous classical information, Fisher information with this quantum Fisher information. And quantum Fisher information is a function of row omega defined to be the maximum classical Fisher information over all possible POVMs. And uh, based on this definition, we can see that the quantum Kramer bound is also searchable asymptotically. Basically, just use this optimal measurement uh, to maximize this classical feature information. And yeah, so this is uh, the definition or uh, one way to define the quantum feature information. And we, are, we actually don't know how to compute it right now. So I'm going to give you another formula, which is this. Uh, basically, you can use this formula to compute the quantum fission information. And uh, here, we need to introduce a new operator called L omega, which is the so-called symmetric logarithmic derivative of rho. So basically, L is um, any Hermitian matrix which satisfy this equation. So uh, you first have the uh, density matrix, and then you compute its derivative, and then you solve L from this equation. And then you are able to calculate this quantum fission information. And this quantity um, has many nice properties. For example, it is uh, faithful. Uh, basically, the QFI is always uh, greater than zero or um, greater or equal than zero. And it is uh, equal to zero if and only if um, the derivative with respect to omega is zero. And also, uh, it is monotonic. Basically, we, we can have an arbitrary CPTP map acting on this density matrix. Uh, it, it's only going to decrease the value uh, of Fisher information. And, uh, but, but this CPTP map has to be parameter independent, of course. Uh, so we also have additivity and convexity. 
uh, yeah, so actually another way to define facial information is through uh, the connection to fidelity. So um, we can define this breast distance using fidelity. So uh, breast distance is a distance between two density matrix and uh, it is defined by two minus two uh, times the fidelity between this, this stuff and then taking the square root. And the fisher information is basically the second order uh, derivative uh, of this breast distance. And you can sort of derive these properties using these definitions as well. Um, okay, so, so here is uh, the definition of fisher information and now I'm going to give you some concrete examples. So the first example is pure state. So uh, if we have a pure state, which is um, psi omega, where um, omega is uh, encoded in this Hamiltonian operation. Basically, uh, we have this Hamiltonian, which is equal to omega times h, and t is simply um, the probing time. And then the fission information is just going to be 4 times t squared times uh, the variance of h on psi. And in order to maximize this fission information, we, we could sub simply just choose the superposition between the um, maximum eigenvalue states and the minimum eigenvalue state. For example, if we have a single qubit, then the optimal initial state is um, just superposition between zero and one, uh, if the Hamiltonian is the Pauli Z matrix. And we could also consider noise on this qubit. So again, if we have an input state, which is the superposition between zero and one, uh, instead of having just this Hamiltonian evolution, we also have a dissipative term, uh, which basically represents the defacing noise. And then in the noiseless case, uh, we already know that the fission information is going to be t squared. But in the no noisy case, we would have <clears throat> we would have t uh, t squared times this exponentially decaying term. So to sort of visualize that, uh, we could project this uh, rho t onto the initial state. And then in the noiseless case, um, it's going to uh, the, the plot is going to oscillate uh, with respect um, with a frequency. Uh, equal to omega, but in the noisy case, uh, we would have this oscillation again, but uh, the envelope is going to decay exponentially. And so in that case, uh, the best strategy is not just uh, to let t goes to infinity because then um, fission information is going to converge to zero. So the best strategy is to measure and renew the qubit every constant time. And uh, in that case, the optimal scaling we can get is the fission information going to be proportional to t. Okay, so uh, finally, we could also consider uh, n qubit defacing channels. So uh, in that case, we, we consider a, a optimal input state in the noiseless case, which is the GHZ state. So it is the superposition between um, this all zero state or, or one state. And in the no noiseless case, we can compute this QFI, which is n squared times t squared. And we can know that uh, it is going to be proportional to n. Uh, n square, so so that's uh, a scaling which we are going to um, care much about later. And uh, in the noise, noisy case, however, uh, instead of having this uh, n square t square terms, we also have this exponentially decaying term. Moreover, the decaying constant is going to be n times larger than previously. So uh, then we can see that uh, the the curve is going to oscillate n times faster than previously. That's why we have this n square scaling here, but uh, the noise uh, is going to be n times larger. Basically, the, the envelope is going to be decaying n times larger. So in the noisy case, if, if we just compute this uh, average QFI over time, it's going to be like still proportional to n. So we, we don't actually have this n square scaling uh, as long as we have this noise. So to sum up, uh, in quantum metrology, the resource we care about is the number of channels we use or the probing time t. And there are two types of estimation precision limits. Uh, the first one is called Heisenberg limit, uh, which basically represent the situation where QFI is um, proportional to n square or t square. And that is the ultimate estimation precision limit <clears throat> allowed by quantum mechanics. The second limit is uh, the standard quantum limit, which is represents the situation where QFI is um, proportional to n or proportional to t. And it is uh, also called the classical limit because we can just uh, reach this limit using the additivity of QFI. So um, we don't actually need to build an entangled state or 
maintain the coherence for a long time. So <clears throat> and we have these two type, different type of limits. So basically in quantum metrology, what we want to do is to try to reach the Heisenberg limit and try to uh, go beyond this standard quantum limit. And uh, in general quantum estimations, instead of considering like um, some qubit defacing noise uh, with poly Z signal, we would consider this general quantum channel, uh, which is defined using these uh, cross operators. Uh, and it can, um, depend on this uh, parameter omega arbitrarily, on, of course, under some regularity conditions. So uh, we would consider two different strategies. The first one is a parallel strategy. So basically, we prepare some initial states, uh, which could be entangled over a bunch of probes and also ancillas. And then this um, quantum channel will be acting on these probes in parallel and then we, we do some final measurement so this is called parallel strategy uh, and uh, another strategy uh, which is more powerful than this parallel strategy is called sequential strategy uh, where we allow this uh, quantum channel to be um, acting on the single probe but with quantum controls in between so we can so this quantum controls could be arbitrary quantum channels as well so um, basically the sequential strategy is um, is much more general than parallel strategy because we could, for example, uh, define this control to be like swap gates, then uh, this sequential strategy is just reduced back to this parallel strategy. And we want to see, uh, we want to know what is the optimal precision limit using these two strategies. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, before we do that, I'm going to first define some quantities. So uh, the first one is the channel QFI of a single quantum channel. So basically, uh, we just have an input which uh, is entangled over a probe and some ancillas, and, and then we just acting, uh, act this single channel on it, and then we maximize this uh, final fission information over all possible input states, which will give us a definition of a QFI of a single quantum channel. And uh, we could also consider the asymptotic case where we have a large number of copies of the quantum channels, which is uh, n here. And uh, in that case, the fission information of this n copies uh, would have two different scaling. The first one is uh, n square, and the second one is n. So <clears throat> uh, it is just as what I said on the previous slide. Uh, and moreover, one can show that the asymptotic QFI is either follows the HL or the SQL. So there's no other, no different scalings than these two. And um, yeah, here's just some simple examples. If we have a unitary channel as I shown previously, then uh, we can reach this Heisenberg limit. So uh, the channel QFI is going to be proportional to N square. Uh, but if we have depolarizing noise, uh, then we are just going to always uh, can only achieve this standard quantum limit. We cannot go above this standard quantum limit to reach this Heisenberg limit. So, um, and also the same is true for sequential strategy. So uh, the scaling of this um, parallel strategy is always going to be the same um, in this sequential strategy as well. Okay, so now I'm going to state our um, main results. Um, one of the main results. So basically we obtain a necessary and sufficient condition determining whether or not the channel reaches reach this uh, Heisenberg limit. So the Heisenberg limit is achievable if and only if um, this Hamiltonian not in crossband condition is satisfied. So basically for a given quantum channel, we can define its Hamiltonian and its crossband. So uh, here is its expression. So uh, the Hamiltonian uh, is defined by this. So it, lo it looks complicated, but actually if we, for example, if we consider just a unitary channel or a parameter independent channel acting on this unitary channel, we can just compute this formula and we, can, we could get the Hamiltonian is exactly equal to the Hamiltonian of this unitary. So that's why we call this term the Hamiltonian of this channel. And also the crossband is simply a matrix uh, subspace spanned by this ki dagger kj terms. <clears throat> okay, so um, yeah, okay. So so this is the Hamiltonian not in crossband condition, and uh, it tells us what is the scaling of this QFI. And instead of caring caring only about this scaling, we we also care about uh, the exact quantum fission information in, in both cases. So that motive, 
this as to define this asymptotic QFI the coefficients. Basically, the, the HL coefficient is going to be the fission information divided by n squared and taking the limit where n goes to infinity. And we also have this SQL coefficient, which is uh, the fission information, the linear coefficient of this fission information. And that we also have uh, theorems to tell us how to calculate uh, this um, asymptotic QFI coefficients. So um, in the first situation where the Hamiltonian is not in the cross band, uh, the, the fission information is going to be four times uh, this minimum uh, of this norm B square, uh, beta square. And it looks complicated, but um, actually uh, you can sort of just view this um, quantity as a distance between the Hamiltonian and the cross band. So let's take a closer look. So H again is the Hamiltonian of the quantum channel. And uh, this K dagger HK term uh, is simply just uh, represent an arbitrary Hermitian matrix in the cross band. So because we are writing this uh, K in this column vector way and H is just an arbitrary Hermitian matrix, uh, which uh, calculate uh, which could be used to calculate this K dagger HK term. So basically uh, this K dagger HK term is just an arbitrary uh, arbitrary matrix in, in this uh, cross band and H is just a Hamiltonian. And then we are minimizing this whole thing over all possible H. Basically it would give us a distance uh, between H and uh, S. And also uh, of course this, this norm here is the operator norm. So, uh, so this whole thing could be computed using semi-definite programs. And in the other case where Hamiltonian is not in the cross band, uh, uh, sorry, when the Hamiltonian is in the cross band, we can calculate uh, this uh, SQL coefficient, which is uh, given by a different operator, alpha minimized under the situation where um, beta is zero. So um, if H is inside S uh, and we compute this, this first quantity is just going to be zero because H is inside S. So uh, the only meaningful um, quantity here is the SQL coefficient. And moreover, um, this SQL coefficient is, is the same for sequential strategy as well. So uh, in order to um, prove these theorems, um, basically we need uh, an upper bound and a lower bound. So the upper bound part is basically bounding uh, this uh, fission information using these quantities. And the result was derived um, in 2008 for parallel strategy and in 2014 for sequential strategies. So basically the linear coefficient is uh, simply just uh, the norm of alpha. Uh, that's why we have this uh, same sequential strategy QFI on the previous slide. And um, the quadratic part is going to be um, beta square in, in the parallel case and beta, beta times something in, in the sequential case. So that explains why the HNKS condition holds in both situations. So in order to uh, prove the attainability of this coefficient asymptotically, we will use uh, quantum error correction pro protocols. And this is uh, the main, main focus of our work. And I'll just remark here that um, in a special case where we consider Hamiltonian estimation in master equations, uh, the results was already known um, previously, um, like two years ago. Uh, but we generalized that to uh, general quantum channel estimation. So um, now I'm going to proceed to talk about um, the sketch of our QVC protocol. So uh, our QCIC portal is, is just this two level encoding stuff. So um, consider we have a bunch of probes and a bunch of ancillas and we um, pair each, each one with, with uh, we pair one probe with one ancilla of the uh, same dimension. And uh, um, sorry. And, and then we just do a first level encoding, which is um, just do the encoding inside these subsystems. We just encode this probe and ancilla pair. Um, 
into this two-dimensional code. Uh, that's why we have logical qubits. So we'll just use a 2D uh, code, to uh, two-dimensional code to, to encode this probe and ancillary pair. And in the, in the first case where Hamiltonian is not in the crossband, we would have a noiseless logical qubit. And in the second case where Hamiltonian is in the investment, we would have noisy logical qubit. Uh, and we can also uh, prove that um, the noise on this logical qubit is, is only defacing noise. So there's no other type of noise on this uh, logical qubit. And then in that case, we could just consider this many body system where each qubit is, is subject to defa defacing noise or it's just uh, have this unitary um, policy rotation. And uh, in the first situations, the optimal uh, many body state is just GSD state. And in the second, um, situation the, the optimal many body state is being squeezed state. So basically we just optimize this to, uh, we first optimize this encoding and then we optimize this um, many body state uh, on these defacing channels. And basically uh, in the end, we can reach this optimal, uh, uh, optimal uh, QFI coefficients. So, so that's the structure of this um, encoding protocol. So I'm just, just going to, uh, be specific about that. So the first step, we need to calculate the, the asymptotic channel QFIs for defacing channels. So by defacing channels, we mean a channel where um, we have this um, ampl off diagonal amplitude, which is changed by a factor Cosi. So Cosi could be a um, could be a complex number. So it's not the traditional definition of uh, defacing channel, so it incorporates incorporates the definition of defacing and also the poly Z rotation. But the important point is only the off diagonal part uh, changes. So when the absolute value of Cosi is one, it, it is simply just a unitary channel, and then the uh, channel QFI could be reached by this logical GHD state, um, and it is a result which is known like um, decades ago. Um, but when the norm of this Cassi is smaller than one, uh, we reach this uh, def th this uh, results of this um, fission information of um, in the SQL case, and uh, we prove that actually this um, upper bound. So we first calculate the upper bound, and then we show that using spin squeeze state could reach this upper bound. So basically, for the situation where we have a defacing channel, the, the asymptotic channel QFI is computable. And then we just reduce every channel to defacing channels. And the trick is to use this following two dimensional code. So the logical zero and logical one state is just defined using this um, two uh, D by D matrix, uh, C0 and C1. And uh, it, it's standard because you can just use a D by D matrix to d define an arbitrary um, quantum state in a bipartite system of this probe and ancilla. Um, and the trick is to add another ancillary qubit, which is zero for the zero logical state and one for the one logical state. So after adding this uh, additional ancillary qubit, you can make sure the, the whole channel is going to be defacing channel. And of course, for the de decoding part, you, you also uh, have this trick. So basically, you try to distinguish between this zero and one state. So you, you first measure what is this uh, logical, uh, what is this additional actual qubit, and then you perform some kind of um, recovery operations on that. So uh, using this two type of encoding and decoding channels, you, you could get um, a defacing channel for an arbitrary channel in between. And then finally, we just do the code optimization. So basically, we optimize um, the fission information of this uh, logical defacing channel over all possible um, encoding and also all possible recovery channel. And it will give us uh, the results. And uh, this part is complicated, so I'm not going to talk about it in details here. OK, so that wraps up our proof sketch of uh, these theorems. And now I'm going to talk about some examples. So the first example is a poly Z signal with split flip noise. So in that case, the Hamiltonian is poly Z matrix and uh, the crossband is just the span of I and X. So clearly Hamiltonian is not in the crossband. So uh, that's, uh, that's actually the most classical example in, in this um, 
in this uh, case where we can reach the Heisenberg limit. And the code is also pretty simple. It, it is just repetition code. So uh, it is uh, zero and zero for zero logical state and one and one for logical one state. And after an error happened, uh, we could just uh, do the recovery channel by mapping the parity between these two states. So if the parity is minus one, then we just flip the first curve. And if, minus, if, if the um, parity is just uh, zero, then nothing happens. So, <clears throat> so this is the whole uh, error correction protocol for uh, bit flip noise. And um, we could also compute this asymptotic QFI uh, in the in the HL case, uh, we would have this FHL is equal to one. And it is exactly equal to the situations where we just have a unitary channel. So basically uh, this bit, bit flip noise is completely correctable uh, when we have this poly Z signal. Uh, and also for single channel, the situation is the same as well. So uh, basically it, it means that um, yeah, we can fully recover the original um, fission information, but that is in general not true if, if the Hamiltonian is not like perpendicular to this uh, noise span. Um, yeah, so uh, the second example would be uh, basically uh, would be with the phasing noise. So now clearly the Hamiltonian would be in the cross band, and we would have a symptotic QFI, which looks complicated, but it is it is really just. Um, going to be proportional to one over P, where P is the error rate. And for the single channels, we would just have a constant. So, so that's, that shows the non-additivity of this quant quantity SQL, um, of, of this quantity of the single channel QFI. And also uh, we don't need QEC because we can just use spin squeeze state. So finally for depolarizing channel, which is um, uh, where the where the crossband is just Sorry, the entire this is for space. interruption. The time is almost over. Please wrap up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank this you. is the last slide. So, okay, so so basically for depolarizing, the situation is the same as as on the previous slide. But actually, in, in this case, we do need error correction because we don't know what is the optimal initial state. Okay, so to wrap up, um, we've shown that the structure of the noise and the Hamiltonian uh, determines the estimation precision limit. And also we can use QEC to achieve this limit. And some future directions would be um, parallel strategy via sequential strategies when HL is achievable. And also like multi-parameter estimation and also bottom one QEC. <clears throat> and finally, I'd like to thank my co-author, uh, Liang Jiang. And uh, thank you all for listening. All right, thank you very much for the very nice talk. We've got a question with five replies already. Uh, Sandrui Chen is asking, uh, is the theory based on QFA applicable when the parameter omega of the channel is discrete? Uh, yeah, sorry, I, 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 <clears throat> the theory does not work in the situation where omega is discrete. So it has to be a, um, a real number, which oh. is uh, in some neighborhood of, of its true value. So yeah, it, it doesn't work for um, this squared uh, estimation, yeah. All right, thanks very much again for the further questions and further discussion with the speaker. Everybody is invited to join round tables by pressing the round table button down uh, in your screen and We'll see you there. Thank you.